Welcome to this look at the new Huddig 1260E on Farming Simulator 19 on PlayStation 4 with me, Mr. Sealy P. This is the Huddig 1260E. Um, this came out yesterday, unfortunately, due to some technical issues I had with my headset and mic. I couldn't record yesterday, so I'm recording it today. Apologies for it being a little bit late. Um, this is by North Modding Company. This is a um, a purpose-built machine by Huddig. Um, it's a fantastic bit of kit. One thing I will say, though, I'm going to put a proviso out there. I don't know about Xbox. I'm not particularly au fait with Xbox controls and controllers, but on PlayStation, this is a minefield of controls. It's a minefield of controls because... We get two Huddig machines in essence. Those two Huddig machines then come with a myriad of various different options, plus an absolute ton of accessories. Now, you may decide, you may decide that this is a bit niche and you can't find a use for it, and that's fine. There'll be other people that will look at this and go, that is fantastic, I've got a ton of uses I can find for it. Um, I've said before in various different mod reviews about things being a Swiss Army knife. This is probably, this fits that description more than any other mod I think I've ever looked at. Um, so, a little bit of back history. I know not everyone likes this. If you want to skip this bit, you're more than welcome to. Hadig was founded in 1959 by uh, John Sunnerund in Sweden. Um, with his brothers and some Norwegian investors, and it was called Svenska Heimas AB, was the name of the company. Now, their concept was retrofitting normal tractors with backhoes and various different equipment. So that's how they started out, retrofitting tractors. Um, in the 60s, they did a collaboration with Valmet, which I think became Valtra. Um, so Valmet provided them with the tractor carcasses, and then they did the backhoe equipment and stuff that went on. And then in the 70s, I think 1974, they did a collaboration with Volvo, doing various different bits for them. Unfortunately, when the contract with Volvo kind of dried up, the company struggled a little bit um, and was on the verge of collapse. And the actual employees bought out the company. Um, so in 1982, it changed its name to Hudiksvall uh, Me uh, Mechaniska AB, and they had a factory in Hud Hudiksvall, which is why it was called that. Um, and it continued on, and they were doing well. And then in 1985, they released the Hudig 960, which was a standalone vehicle, kind of like this. This is the 1260E. The Hudig 960 was a smaller version, um, which was their own kind of, you know... It, did everything they wanted it to in one package. Um, so then in 1988, the company changed its name to Huddig, so that it became Huddig AB. They have, at the moment, it got in the works the Huddig Tigon, and that's got a Cummins diesel engine and electric motors, or motor. Um, so it's a hybrid vehicle, which is supposed to obviously improve um, emissions, increase longevity of use. Um, you can run the... I think you can use the loader and arms on battery power alone for about two hours, I think, something like that, and then combinations of. That's in trials and testing at the moment and should come out in the real world in 2021, as it stands at the moment. Um, so that's kind of a bit of a back history behind it, because it is a very unusual-looking thing, but it is purpose-built as it is now. Um, as you can see, big difference between that version, which is the city version, and then this version here, um, which is the cable version. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, <laughs> we've got a lot to look at. I mean, look at that. <laughs> it's just, it's a fantastic looking thing. A North Modern Company, again, knocked out the park. This is a home run. I mean, it just, it looks fantastic the attention to detail is incredible so we'll have a look in the mod tub first and then I'll try to get round everything I, I want to I apologise if I get a couple of things wrong the help window will be open a lot of the time <laughs> because there are a lot of functions and that's what I'm saying the problem you've got is the base vehicle alone has got a lot of functions then you add to that 
the additional bits and implements and things and then the functions then increase and it can get a bit of a minefield going through but we'll we'll have a look so the vehicle itself you'll find under vehicles under wheel loaders so we've got the Hudig 1260e cable and the Hudig 1260e city the city doesn't have the um, lift on the top cable because the lift on there is designed to reach up to power cables power lines or you know anything that's high cables cable related stuff um i mean you could use it for a plethora of jobs in the real world in game that might be a little bit trickier to find certain jobs for that i know for a fact you could use that for cutting down trees and tree limbs and things like that which is a brilliant idea um for me personally for making mod reviews and videos i thought that's the perfect tool for getting really nice elevated screenshots of things scenes and stuff because the boom reach is really high so already i've got ideas in my head putting it out there to you guys you know and everyone out there that plays will look and think oh i've got an idea and that's brilliant love that um so these will both use 23 slots um, the Hudig cable with the extra lift is 250 grand to buy, 157 horsepower, runs at 29 miles per hour, which I think is 45, 40, 40, 45 kilometers now. Um, and then we've got the Hudig 1260E City without the lift is 220 grand, still 23 slots, still 157 horsepower, still 29 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. So options available. I think the options are the same on both. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. So, we can change the main colour, and there are some brilliant colours in there. You've got Hudig, you've got Hudig Blue, Hudig Black, Hudig Yellow, which I particularly like, Exocut Edition, that purple. I mean, it looks fantastic. It's a very bold statement. Then you've got Hudig Gold. Wow. <laughs> um, the grey mat I really like as well. That's a really nice look. Um, and then we've got white and then we can go through the various other you know ones we have available in the color palettes depending upon what you particularly like um, so we'll put it back on I don't know let's go we'll go with standard color um, rim color we can pick from anything on that palette again we've got all the same colors in the Hudig range and then we've got all the various different options so if you wanted to stick with that or you can mix and match yeah however you want to go you know how rims work uh, and then design color changes the boom arms so we can change the boom front lifter and the rear backhoe um, and the backhoe supports will change color depending on what design color you choose then as far as now this is type and this is actually tire configurations as well so at the moment we've got standard cable then we can have cable but it's that tire choice with rail option now the reason I'm doing this testing or this review on Ravenport was because of the, the railroad. Now this rail system in the real world is designed so that it goes onto the rails, that hooks onto the rails and it runs along the rails. Um, so it can do any kind of work for the, the railways, it can cut down trees, it can do mowing down the side, it can, you know, you name it. Any kind of work it needs with the backhoe for digging, for, you know, whatever. Um, in game, I, I haven't managed to get that to hook onto the rails so possibly a little bit gimmicky it's in the, it's in the real world I mean maybe I'm just putting on the rails wrong but I, I couldn't get it to work on the rail but you know uh, so then we've got a different tyre choice here but then also you have the rail option and then we've got another tyre choice which is more like the knock-in and then also with the rail choice and then we're back to oh no we're not we're on to muddy mary the muddy mary tracked version with the tracked version you lose the um oh, i don't know what they're called for the backhoe the um the lifter arms basically to lift it off the ground to the st stabilizers um you don't get the option for the stabilizers if i take that off you see the stabilizers come back on again those big flappy paddles um and then I think we go back to standard from there. Yeah, we do. Back to standard. Now inside, we've got floor mat. You can have standard, which is like a rubberized mat, or you can have a floor mat textile. So you can have a textiled version. Uh, and then light configuration around the top. We'll swing around a little bit. We've got standard lights, but then we can have um, that light bar, LED light bar, that runs all the way around the top. And then you can have it that, and then with the hazard beacon, or the beacons. And the beacons are LED flasher units. 
I love that. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, like I say, the 1260E City Edition has all the same options, just doesn't have the lift. Um, same options with the colour, same options with the rims. Uh, we've got same option for design colour. And then I think it's the same, we've got City, so rather than the um, cable version, but it's City and Rail. Then you've got the different tyre choices with Rail. Same thing again, all the way through, and then we get to Muddy Mary. And then back, same with the floor map. And then same with the light configuration, which you can see a little bit better um, without the lift on there. So off, on, and then with the beacon lights as well. Um, so the options, yeah, pretty much the same on both, you just don't get the lift. So, this is where things get complicated. So this is the city version, right here. Like I say, very nice. Turn it on. Door opens and closes when you get in and out. So we have to change a lot of options here, and we've got front loader option at the moment. So if pressing triangle changes your tool options as it always does. So on front loader, L1, front loader up and down, front loader tilt forward and backwards. That's quite straightforward. <laughs> Still on front loader, R1, and right stick up and down, does the window. So we look in here at the rear window, the rear window swings up and out the way, right up into the cab. That's quite cool, I haven't seen that sort of thing before. Very nice indeed. Um, L1, R1, we've got uh, some rotation of the boom. The swing of the boom side to side like that, this is all still on front loader at the moment, then up and down puts down your stabilizers for the loader. So that's all on front loader. Then we switch to backhoe. L1, up and down, side to side. R1, uh, up and down. Gives you in and out, like that. Then L1 and R1, and we've got our rotate, or our up and down of the end of the head, like that. As you can see just there, which is all very nice. <laughs> and then we go back to front loader. Lights. And that all round light bar, I think is, I love that. And then we've got the beacons, which I think are just fantastic. Absolutely love them. Like so. Now we can change driving position too. What's the lights on this? I love this. L1, R1, and X change driving position. So if you're going to use the backhoe, puts those lights up out of the way, swings the seat round. So if you're going to be doing backhoe work from inside, like so, you can crack on with your backhoe work. L1, R1 and X, swings your back round and you can be on your front loader, front lifter, puts the wheel back into position. Interior, very nice indeed. Horn, outside. Oh, hang on. Do you get there's a couple of funny camera angles on this. That one's a bit of an odd one. Um, I think that comes from the lifter, in all honesty. Then we're back out again. So those are your options on the standard city version. Now what I will say is on the cable version, the front loader options are identical, um, as are the backhoe options. So none of that changes for that, but what we do have now is the lift options. This one I didn't have the rail option on, so this one I'm going to show you the rail option too. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we'll hop in, start it up. So, like I said, at the moment we're on front lifter and we've got our usual up and down, tilt backwards and forwards. I've just showed you all that, and like I said, it's all the same. That's not a problem. But what we do have now, if I switch, it does say unfold tractor, and we've got open cover as an option on this. Open cover does the rails. So, if you look at the back now, if I open cover, that's put those rail things down. Lifts the whole thing off the deck like so. Now if you've had any more, any more joy than I have with it on the rails, I'm not going to show you because I, I, I'll drive out, I'll put it down and honestly I couldn't get anything to work. Um, it could be something I'm doing wrong but it, it may just be there because in the real world that's what you have got a rail version. Um, so unfold tractor is what unfolds this and this is fantastic because it unfolds and puts you in it. Now you can control everything 
from here. So you can drive from here. It is articulated, obviously, as well. This is, say, obviously, it is articulated. So you can control this. <laughs> it's amazing. Camera angles from here go back in cab to there, but you can have in here as well. So like I said, for extending the boom out and taking like aerial shots, for example, that's fantastic. Love that. Um, so we'll switch over. So pressing triangle, we're going to go from front loader to backhoe to lift. So now we're on lift. L1, right stick up and down, takes you up and down. Now, obviously you don't want to be in that position. Uh, side to side, takes your rotation side to side. And this will go... all the way around like so again makes it pretty versatile now R1 and then side to side does your extension of the boom now look how far that, that goes so if you want to do a bit of work on the light pole if you decide you want to do that go back to L1 and then raise that up <laughs> now L1 and R1 is the one we need to be looking at now because that's what tilts the bucket or the, the grab thing, cage, the cage. So like I say, from here, that's incredible. So from here, like I said, if you want to do thumbnails and you want to get a nice view across the countryside or a down shot on something, for me, this is the perfect tool. I always used to use the Scorpion King and put the boom right out and then climb up the, up the boom. Don't need to anymore. And I can still, still operate it from here, so I can still drive. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be doing that. But, so like I say, with that, there could be a myriad of uses, a myriad of things you decide you want to use it for, or you might look at it and think, I honestly can't find anything I would want to use that for. And you are entitled to that. Oh, I've got to find the right one. There we go. This is what I'm talking about. This is where things get a little bit more interesting because, I mean, that in essence, that's the extra control. So between the city and the cable version, that's what you get. So I'm going to do is fold tractor. We'll put that away. So there are no attachments for that that boom for the lift. If you can find a use for it, great. If you can't, you probably go for that option. That's entirely up to you. Um, so those are the options. Interior is exactly the same, all the lights are exactly the same. This one is obviously the tracked version, same thing, got the lift, got all the stuff on there, but this one is obviously tracked, a little bit lower to the ground, less compaction, all those kind of things. Um, so that in essence is the vehicle. I love that boom, I think it's brilliant. Um, now, implements. Where are they in the mod hub and what do we get? So, we go back into here we go to tools and we go along to miscellaneous first so miscellaneous is where you're going to find all of the implements for the backhoe <coughs> excuse me so we've got an adapter now that's a backhoe adapter that can that can put wheel loader tools on i know it's bonkers now most of these are three slots a couple of them are four and I think the cutter header, we're going to get to the cutter header, is six. But I think pretty much all the rest of them are three or four slots. So not, not horrendous on the slot count for the first one of any of them. So that will adapt your backhoe attacher to a wheel loader attacher. We've got a roller. Um, that will return your ground to its original ground state. I've kind of checked that one out already. We've got a mower, which mows. We've got an attacher plate. The attacher plate goes onto the backhoe but gives you a trailer hitch so if you want to be using it for moving trailers around and things like that you can do that now the, the, the backhoe or the vehicle does have a trailer hitch already because there is a trailer available too um, we've got the stump grinder we've got an asphalt cutter now in the real world obviously the asphalt cutter will cut um, the, uh, the asphalt tarmac that kind of thing and then it gets taken out for digging holes and doing road repairs and that kind of thing in game that can be used as a plow now obviously that's only a one row plow so whilst it has got a use fairly limited i would say um but it will plow now we've got bucket options there are five bucket options g g85 with teeth g85 without teeth 
um, 840 litres, 840 litres. Um, takes all those crop types, pig food and all. So if you want to move things around with this, you absolutely can. You've then got the grading bucket, which is 1,400 litres. G45 without teeth, that's 380 litres. So that's much narrower, smaller. That would be for doing pipe trenches and things like that, which obviously, unfortunately, in game, we can't do on console. Um, then you've got slope bucket, 800 litres. Again, takes all those things. Then we've got backhoe forks. Those are adjustable, and those also have straps. Nice. Uh, and then we've got the NMC rotor tilt. That thing is a minefield in its own. That could be a mod review of its own. It is mind-boggling. Um, then we've got the NMC grapple for forestry work. Um, and then we've got the Waratah cutter header. Now, the Waratah cutter header we can have as Waratah or John Deere, because the Waratah header came part as an update on one of the vehicles recently. Um, so you can have it as John Deere or Waratah. Um, I don't think the grapple... Oh, yes, we can change the main colour of the grapple. Sorry. I, that's what I thought I'd check. I'm not sure I'd looked on that. So you can change the grapple if you want it to match up with the colour of whatever you've chosen for your particular Huddig. That's entirely up to you. Um, coming back off, we've then got the NMC Tree Planter. This, again... <laughs> minefield. Um, this is a tree planter. And you get special pallets for this. This will do 40 trees. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a little while. Um, so that's all of the headers or attachments for the backhoe. For the front, we go to wheel loaders. And we scroll across, and we've got the NMC tilting coupler. So you put that on, and then you can put any wheel loader attachment on, and it tilts, if you want to tilt them. It will also, the actual um, Huddig 1260E, will also attach to any other wheel loader attachment. So anything else wheel loader on the front, I tried it on a bucket and I tried it on a log fork, it will pick up any wheel loader attachments anyway. Uh, we've then got a lift arm. Now the lift arm um, is designed for picking up big bags, or it can pick up big bags, and it will hook up to hook lifts. So if you want to manhandle a hook lift trailer around or an attachment just to put it into a better position, so that, lift it up out of the way, it will do that. Um, I'm sure there are probably going to be a load of other options and things that people will find a use for that they can get it to work on, um, but that will do that, and it, that is also extendable. I don't think you can change the colour on that. Uh, and then we've got pallet forks for the front, for the wheel loader, and then we've got the Huddig bucket, which is 1,700 litres, a little bit bigger. Um, not massive. I, w I would like to see a bigger bucket, but that said, because we've got various different ones in-game already, and this will hook up to wheel loader buckets, Anything wheel loader related, it will hook up to. So it should be absolutely fine. Um, yeah, those were three and four slots as well. So pretty good. Now, if we go into... I know, sorry. If we go into pallets, the NMC pallet saplings. So that's the new saplings module. That goes in that sapling planter, tree planter. And that's 40 trees, as opposed to the standard one, which is only 20. Um, yeah, we'll get on to that in a bit. And then, where, where was it? Hang on. And, uh, was it trailers? I think it was trailers. We've got the NMC trailer that comes as part of this pack as well. 4,000 litre trailer. Um, you can change the design colour, like so. We can change the main colour, which is the chassis like so. And then we can change the rim colour if you want to go with gold, like so. This does have straps as well and it tilts to unload so you can put pallets and stuff on it. If you do tree planting you can put a load of the trees on it, you know, however you want to go about it. It's entirely up to you. But there is a trailer that comes apart of this pack. I told you there was loads of stuff in this. There's no way I could have added this into yesterday's mod review. Ah, <sighs> So... Now comes the fun bit. I'm going to start with the front, uh, the wheel loader tools first, I think. Because that's going to be easier to look at. Much easier to look at. So. So this, whilst it is a front loader, and it says front loader in the menu, it takes wheel load implements. So the Huddig bucket, um, as soon as you hook it up, it goes to control group nil, which is actually the implement itself. You need to go back to front loader, and then we can operate the front loader as you would do normally. Like so. Disconnect that. 
like I said, there's a lot, unfortunately, there's a lot of going through all the options. Um, it reminds me a little bit of... Um, mine's gone blank. Anyway, we'll hook up. So, pallet forks. Again, we are on control group nil. We need to switch it over to front loader. We can raise and lower our forks. What we can also do... Let's see a little bit better. Um, we can switch the forks like so. Uh, we go up and down. So we're on our forks. Up and R1 and up and down on the right stick. We can bring them in and out for loading and unloading. If we do our tension belts, forks with tension belts. Now, if I move the forks now, like so, they move away from the tension belts. So what you have to do is um, just... Take the tension belts off, adjust your forks, then redo the tension belts and you won't have a problem. But tension belts on the forks, very nice indeed. Nice feature. Back to front of the tool, drop it down and drop it off. Um, then we've got the tilt coupler. Which I'm hoping it's going to let me hook up to. There we go. Uh, again, back to front loader tool. There was a couple of times when I was looking over this, trying to work out everything works. You forget that you haven't switched tool, and then you think, "Oh, it's not working. Why is it working?" Um, you know, it's just it will come down to operator error a lot. So back to front loader tool, raise it up. Now, huh. as you can see, top left hand corner, we've now got as we add more and more things on, the amount of options available grows, and it gets a lot more complicated. So I need to switch on to, I think it's that one, which is my tilt, is that right? So now, no, not still doing that. Right, L1, R1, <laughs> and up and down. So that's the tilt adapter that we've just put on. So that tilt adapter will go with any wheel loader attachment. So you put the tilt adapter on, then a wheel loader attachment, and that gives you the option to tilt. what you'll use that for well i was wondering that myself if you're going to put a load on and sometimes you're not quite level so it might be the trailer you're loading onto a log trail wherever it might be is on a slight hill or that's on the on the straight and you're on a slight hill and you come up you know what it's like for trying to put something flat onto a trailer so if you are on a hill or a slope or a gradient um and you can't get it quite level a little bit of tilt don't have to go that far and all of a sudden you find that the tilt of your vehicle on a slope is negated by the roll of the rotor. Um, which I think is absolutely brilliant. There we go. So, we'll go back to... Please go back to front loader. Drop that down. Uh, we'll drop all of that off. And then we'll move on to the last of the wheel loader tools for this. Or well, what I will do is show you as well while we're here. Let me just switch to backhoe. There's that out of the way. So the actual vehicle does have a trailer hitch in the back already. It's got quite a long arm on that trailer, but it hooks up to the trailer that comes in the pack. Um, we do have straps, quite a few straps on the back of that as well. And we can left stick. Whoa, that I didn't know. That's an interesting one. Whoa, okay. I didn't know you could do that. mind blown anyway uh, I was going to try and unload oh no you've got to be kidding me okay that extends all I didn't know that did oh, blimey that's what I mean there are so many controls I was just looking for the bit that tilts the bed to unload it That's why. I don't have access to the land. I can't believe that goes all the way out there. That's amazing. Right, let's try this again. There we go. Got to be kidding me. There we go. 
There's your tilt funks, I knew we'd get there in the end. So if you've got stuff in there that you want to tip. I know it's only 4,000 litres, but I reckon you'd be using that more for taking pallets of things with you, maybe even for a bit of logging, you can sling your logs in the back of there. Um, like I say, it just increases the ability to do various things with it. It's just a, an absolute multi-tool of a pack. It's, it's amazing. Um, unfortunately, like for making mod reviews, it's a lot... It's a lot to get through, a lot to show. So, what's left? We've got the lift arm. So, again, back to front loaded tool. Lift that up now. What we can do with this? Two. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, let's switch to the implement itself. And then we go to that. Right stick in and out. So, we're on the tool itself. R1 and right stick up and down. Puts the. I mean, that's quite a reach on that in its own right but this will hook up to oh come on seriously <laughs> oh. again back to front loader there we go back to front loader so if you can be loading up bags of seed fertilizer and stuff into your seeds and things you want to do it manually by using that you can use that, which is absolutely fantastic, which obviously then got the extension as well. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to be doing this, but it, it don't, not this particularly. Let's uh, disconnect that. Um, but it does give you the option as well to hook up to hook lifts. Uh, again, I'm not sure why. Um, but we can... I suppose, you know, if you want to... If you're moving around in the yard or for whatever reason but it will hook up to hook lifts I mean that's that's kind of what it says and what it's supposed to do so we'll go back out again and disconnect that so that is all of the front loader wheel loader tools and implements now we move on to the <laughs> the back hose stuff so I'll switch off switch off switch over to the Huddig City I'm going to put the beacons on just because I like them I'm not, I'm not going to keep them on the whole time. So, backhoe attachment. It's going to line up a little bit better. It's going to be the same with all of these, but now, as you can see, I've got a bit of tilt on that. So, what I want to do is so that one. Help me. So, I mean, this is mad. Uh, front loader. I know it's one of these options here. There we go. That one. Just to straighten up a little bit. So, NMC adapter. What will happen with this now? I go to backhoe. Raise my arm up. So, that now is an adapter which takes it from the backhoe to a wheel loader implement. So, again, with the wheel loaders and all the different wheel loader implements, we've got much bigger buckets, there's all sorts of stuff you can actually hook up, which means you could then hook up a wheel loader implement um, with this. So if you are moving stuff and you want to use the backhoe to be more kind of realistic and you want a, you want a larger bucket than we've got available potentially in any of the um, backhoe stuff. Uh, is that a little bit? There we go. Put it down. Put it oh no, no. Oh no, no. There we go. Back to backhoe and then lift it up. So you've then got the backhoe implements and options available, but then it does. We do then get into. Oh man. Backhoe. Uh, so up and down, are in and out, and then we've got our. Get that to go. Like so. Which obviously, just for using a bucket, is absolutely fine. But if you're going to be using um, an implement that has more functions, you then increase the amount of functions and options kind of exponentially as you go. Um, so that's the attacher for uh, backhoe to wheel load implements. I'm going to disconnect all of that. So the NMC adapter, and that's gone. So, moving on. We've got the roller. Oh, that's not really good place. Better. 
I wanted to be as thorough as I could. So, roll up, attach that. Now we don't have access to the land. Again, automatically it goes to that implement I put on, so I need to switch it. So back hoe to get that off the ground. Now some of these will work automatically, some of them need to be turned on to use. But the roller will do this. Now, I thought it was supposed to return the ground to its original state. And if I switch to the actual thing itself, it doesn't give you an option to turn it on or anything. All I'm seeing at the moment is it kind of, it's just cutting the grass, really, because it's leaving the um, weeds and things there and the flowers that have been put in. So it's not actually removing those, um, but it will do that if you, if you want it to do that. That's the touch you. Let's disconnect that. Uh, back to back hoe, lift it up, and we'll go to the next one. Actually, what I will do is switch to the front loader and raise that back away a second. There we go. Back to the back hoe. Uh, sorry about this, we have got a few to get through. Although the five buckets, I'll show you one. You've already seen one bucket, but you won't need to see all of them. Um, so, mower. As you can imagine, it mows. Now, with the flexibility of the, the backhoe, um, if you are going to be doing verges alongside roads, if you are going to do the rail thing, if you want to go down that route, um, because you've got all that various different tilt, if I go to that one, you've got all these tilt options as well. Um, so for mowing on gradients, on banks, on you know whatever it is you want to be doing, there are quite a few, and, uh, and all honestly, what I would say is you just got to come on and honestly just fiddle around, <laughs> fiddle around with it, because there are, yeah, have I mentioned there are a lot of options. Now, this when you turn the mower on, and this is one you do have to turn on, it says the top turn on wheel load at all. So, L1 and square, turn it on. If I drop it down, and go that way, there we go. So we are mowing, it's kind of putting it out to the left. It's not mowing all the time, so we have to get make sure we write down as long as you can. So you do actually get the grass left behind, whereas the one we had before, the roller, didn't really do that. It's just to get find that sweet spot where you can keep your speed up and still mow. I think, does it mow in both directions? I think it does. Yep, it mows in both directions. Like so. Then like I say, if you're doing verges by the side of the road, or, you know, you're doing... Just turn it off, and drop that off. That's the mower. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just perfect thing. Small, compact little unit, will do what you need it to. I'm really... that rail thing's bugging me. I might have to try it before the end, just to make sure I haven't gone mad. Um, right. Next. Oh, next is the trailer adapter. Um, I'm not going to show that because at the end of the day you hook up to it and it just gives you an adapter for putting a trailer. Stump grinder, as you can imagine, um, zoom in on that. When you cut your trees down, turn on wheel loader tool, switch back to your front load, no, your backhoe tool, and you've got your option then for grinding out stumps, wherever they may be. There's your stump grinder. Uh, turn that off. Switch back to that. Drop that off. Uh, so yeah, then we've got the um, the asphalt cutter. Don't do that. Like that. Turn of access to the land, which is fine. If you see already, top left it now says allow crate fields. So with the asphalt cutter, we can in essence plow. I wouldn't want to plough a big field with this, let's be honest. Um, but what you can do is allow crate fields, L1 and triangle, go back to my backhoe, drop it down. It might be you want to be uber, um, uber precise and you might decide you want to plant your trees along a properly 
ploughed and furrowed strip um, you might want to delineate an area for something I'm not too sure but it, it does that I mean if, if you can find a use for it obviously in the real world it would be for cutting asphalt but obviously in the game on console at least anyway um, you can't do that so that's the asphalt cutter uh, next sorry I know I'm just dumping these over the place Uh, what was next? Oh yes, the buckets. The buckets pretty much are the same as when I hooked up the wheel loader bucket using the adapter. Um, again, I would love to be able to in-game, you know, dig little trenches and, you know, to do excavating and that would be fantastic. It really would. But we'll stick our bucket on and it works no different to any excavator tool or anything like that. Switch back to our backhoe. And we've got all of our options available for our bucket. Uh, L1 and R1 and we can bring it in and out like so but if you are moving material bulk materials around whatever it might be and you want to use one of these you know but there are like I said we've already looked at the mod tub there are five of those or in the store there are five of those available and they all do that you can manipulate them around on the back coat which brings me on to what's next oh yeah pallet forks on the back coat <laughs> this is this is the same. This is a little bit, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, fantastic idea. I, I love the concept. But getting to grips with using them, blimey. Uh, so, we've got our movement like that. Um, obviously, we can move our backhoe around. Um, this does have straps as well. So, the small one does have straps too is very nice indeed um, I'm not sure how much you should get out of it let's go to the right one there do these ones not open and close oh maybe these ones don't open and close it might just be the other ones that do oh no they do using um, L1, R1 and left stick side to side these ones open and close as well for different pallet sizes um, now some of these bits of equipment will be like for example those pallet forks will become more relevant with the next tool because the next tool is um, is at the moment my nemesis in this pack of all the implements this is the rotor tilt so I'll hook that up <laughs> please don't make me demonstrate it I don't like it um, so L1 and R1 up and down um, opens and closes those little grabs there so I suppose maybe for forestry I'm not sure put in teeth uh, you know but it does that to start off with then if we go R1 we can swing that head around side to side so if you can imagine you've got pallet forks on there now now we can rotate those pallet forks around so they're facing out that way rather than in towards the vehicle which means you can have them pallet forks front and rear or just on the rear or, you know. so that does make a big difference and then L1 and R1 we've got the tilt so we've got a tilt mechanism too so you've got rotation all the way around tilt left and right and we've got that weird thing open and close there now I know that doesn't seem why is that your nemesis well it's my nemesis because if you then come across and do that, for example, let's go back to back coat, lift the back coat up, let's tilt the back coat where we want it. No, then see, this is what happens. All of the controls you had before go out the window, everything starts going mad. The world. Right, tilt that way. We've now incre increased the amount of controls we've got by so much now I need to rotate it which was uh, that one wasn't it no nope, that's that there we go <laughs> so we rotate all the way around and now we've got forks on the back which we can rotate in any direction and we can put you know it makes it really 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 versatile don't get me wrong but then when you start looking at all the control options and control surfaces and whew, it's going to take a lot of practice um, and I'd say with straps as well 
fantastic. So we'll disconnect uh, that and we'll disconnect the rotor tilt as well. Like so. We're nearly there. So next we've got the grapple. Now grapple it works the same way as all the other grapples do. Go back to back home like so. Switch over to the implement. So left stick, the L1, R1, left stick, side to side, opens and closes the grapple. And then which one rotates it? Well, that's the window. Left stick. So L1, R1 with it on. Wow. No. Why is that not? Right stick up and down. No. Oh, this is what I mean. I can't. Potentially then that doesn't rotate without the rotor tilt. Yeah. That's a fixed unit. That's why it's not working. Unlike the grapples we get on a lot of the machinery which can swing round as well. That needs to have the rotor tilt and that combined and then you can get the open and close and rotation as well. Blimey. That make life easy do they? Don't think that's got straps is it? No. <laughs> no. Don't add straps to that as well. Good grief. I think I'll have a heart attack. Right. Uh, next. This one could get a little bit hairy when we hook up to it because it didn't want to go down the ground very well. Uh, back hoe. Down. Please hook up to it. Might have to swing around to get to this one. This is the Waratah header. Um, so this is a tree. I mean, I say, if you want to do everything, <laughs> this will do everything because you can cut the trees, you can stump grind, you can, you know. There we go. Waratah header. I knew it would do that. Now let's flick that all over the place. Uh, let's go back to back hoe. Raise that up out of the way. Right. So now we've got a tree header for cutting trees too. Um, this one. Turn on wheel load at all, L1 and square. So now we're on that. Cut length, we can go up to 15 metres. So this will cut the same as any other header does and any other tree harvester, tree cutter. We can go all out to 15 metre cuts and back to one again. Um, and you just operate it. So go back to, hang on, please, back home. Like I say, unfortunately, because now we've got the back coat with that implement and the head we've got a few more options but we can move it around put it where we want it right up against the tree down where we need it cut pull away you know it will do everything a tree the harvest is supposed to do um it says that i wasn't intending doing this and i don't know if it's going to work but if it doesn't i'll cut it out <laughs> you'll never see it that was really good time these trees. Well that's weird. So I've got it turned on, haven't I? Do we not cut palm trees then? Oh, there we go. Whoa! That's got an interesting cut sound. I mean, it'll do it. Don't get me wrong. It will absolutely do it. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's fantastic. I honestly cannot go over the amount of stuff in this pack. I mean, it'll... It's like a DLC, let's be honest. It, it's got so much stuff in it. It's a DLC, isn't it? Let's, you know... Let's not prevaricate around the bush. Right, back to back home. Last, I think, this is the last one. This is our tree planter. 
Oh yes. And you need the tree planter pallets that come with this pack. So we go to over this one and then load it, press L3 and it's loaded. Now, here's my only issue with this. <laughs> my only issue? Let's raise it up, do that in like that and then we'll tilt that like that, maybe some of it turns to the ground, I don't know. Let's try that, yeah. Um, so, I've been through all the options on this and help me out if you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but if I go L1, those are my options. R1, those are my options. L1 and R1, those are my options. Nowhere on there does it give me the option to change the planting distance. And you'll see why that's an issue in a minute. You might have already seen, actually, um, why that might be an issue. We've got change driving direction, cruise control, cruise control speed, toggle radio, stop engine, honk, turn on wheel loader tool. No, it's not even like when you turn it on, you see now that's rotating, that it gives me any other options, because I can't change the planting distance. And it could be something I'm doing wrong. Again, wouldn't surprise me. If I switch to the tool itself, I'm not seeing the option. Uh, go for our camera angles. No. So, I guess only speed will make a difference. I really don't know. But with this turned on, if I now put it into the ground, you watch how quickly the trees come out. And it's a little bit scary. So, go put to our back coat, put that down and we drive forward. We've already put one in, so watch. We just planted 40 trees. 40 trees! But what I'm worried about now is when they grow, they're going to be too close to each other. Especially if you run in seasons, when it can really depend on the growth of the tree and how far it grows if it's not you know, restricted by the trees. Now, like I say, if I've missed a control, and I apologise if I have, um, we've got an allow create fields option, limit to fields, but I can't find an option for changing the placing distance of that. It just seems to go really fast. Um, oh, what? When did I do that? <laughs> okay, well, I <laughs> didn't even notice that. So we've planted some trees in the car park, which is what everyone wants to see, don't they? Um, is that everything? I'm going to try the rail thing. I think I'm going to have to, aren't I? Do I have it on that? I've got it on this, haven't I? Let's try that to finish off. Um, I usually apologise if it's taken a long time to get through them all, but I'm not going to, because there's so much stuff, you know, it, it was going to take a long time. Now, I've tried to line this up as best I can, because what normally happens is, the track bits go down onto the tracks and then the tyres of the vehicle itself are what then drive it along the floor. So I'm lined up as, as best as I can see. Open cover and we're onto the tracks. We are on the tracks. But if I try and drive forward, it doesn't... Oh, please tell me it's going to work now. No, so it's dropped off the tracks. Oh, I don't know, hang on. Hang on. It's yeah, it can't quite make up its mind where it wants to go. We're now going off on the sidings. It kind of works. It's not perfect. I love the articulation in that. That was pretty cool. That twist and tilt in the frame. Very cool. Um, I think I think that's everything. I hope it's everything. At, at least it gives you an idea as to what's available. What it kind of does you will probably go away and find a million and one different things you're going to get it to do um i think it's a fantastic bit of kit really nice implement again it may not be your cup of tea at all and if it's not of course it's entirely your prerogative um that's from north modding company i hope you found it useful and informative in some way shape or form if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do if you want to leave a comment feel free and if you want to share this video then please be my guest.
whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.